That's a really good question. I thought, I thought about wearing it, wow. you know, like, uh, like, you know, bling. Um, Thank you, Rush. Looks pretty good. Thank you. you. Yeah. Frank Castle is in my bones. You know, like Frank Castle is in my bones. And uh, the things that I saw in him and that he saw in me, too. You know, getting to this project, as much as you jumped at the opportunity, I imagine it had to feel like a risk as well, too, because you have a you have a padre, a project that's basically theater in front of cameras. There's not a lot of projects like that. And it's obviously very heavy material. So if it was a risk for you, what's it like to get rewarded with the nomination yesterday? Um, I try to find risk. I get most excited by risk I, I, and uncomfortable. <laughs> Um, but when I went for the part, I remember saying to my wife as I went to um, Zoom um, with Florian, I said, I've never been so scared to get a part or not get a part. I was so passionate about it, but I knew it would be really hard and scary to do the material, what it demanded of me as an actor, everything about it. So, yes, it makes it very, very sweet when things like this turn out. Um, but the real gift of it, Scott, was the... We're working on it and, and being part of something that hopefully will be meaningful and start really meaningful conversations. There's, you know, obviously this the one scene with you and Anthony in the picture, I, I think, can be shown at acting schools for the end of time. I mean, you have what, what I think is a fiery lack of remorse for his character is such a unique choice for Anthony. I don't know if 84 is the new prime for actors, but he does this thing where he has he's, he has this look on his face. The whole scene and you know like you know all the dialogue just by looking at his face i felt like i was wondering if you experienced that and, and and if you could even teach what he did in that scene i'm so glad you mentioned it you know florian the director worked with him on the father and he said I, the whole way through filming he said you know i've been hearing from anthony for every day for six months he has a question about the script about this i should wear that he said i got the same amount of emails from anthony on this movie as i did the father where he's in every scene um, and he, and that's a great lesson for <laughs> young acting students. But when I turned up with him, he was so excited to do it. He was there early, two hours early. He got there just like a racehorse chomping at the bit because he hadn't acted in 18 months. We went to shoot the scene. They they lit him first. They put all the cameras out. First AD said, do you want to rehearse? And he said, no. He just sort of just rolled film and the whole, his whole coverage was done by, 9.30 in the morning. We then turned around onto me and did my coverage of the scene and working with someone like Anthony, it's the greatest gift. Same with like a Laura Dern. It's so good. They make it easy to act with because they demand you to be present. They demand you to be out of your head and just with them. And then after we did my side, the scene was done. It was 10.30 in the morning. And he turned to Florian and said, I want to do it again. And I, I knew they only had the location for one day. And Florian said, fine. I said, why, why does he want to go again? Like, that was amazing. And he goes, he misses acting. I think he just misses <laughs> acting. Another go. That's great. A, a guy like that just just wants the reps, isn't that? That's amazing after all these years. Um, 83. Yeah, yeah. And, and you know, same thing for you. I, you have a look on your face at the end of the scene where I think you're conveying a lot of emotions. You know, it could be, it could be, or no, I'm sorry, it could be uh, betrayal, sadness, anger, disgust. And I'm just curious when you have to have a, a facial expression like that in a scene, how do you go about expressing so many different things? And also does that, would that require a lot of takes to get it right? Um, the key is not to take the temperature of what, just to feel what you're feeling. And there's a lot of different things um, that he's going through there, including shame that he's in a and his weakness around his father still. So there's a lot of anger, there's all this, but he's also still a little bit quiet. He is feeling stunned. And the key to it, I guess, is just trusting that what is happening is happening in his reading, I guess. And that's one thing Florian really, he wouldn't let us watch the monitor. He wouldn't let us watch anything back. He just said, just trust me that I've got this. And you just play the same. Just be with him. 
kind of going with the you know, obviously it's what Florian do, Florian does in his world with with theater uh, and these pictures, but the the intimacy you get from this movie for, for me, I, I felt like, and I'm wondering if you thought this that it's almost hard to come away with a message from the film or a theme because you're basically just right there with this family through like the worst chapter of their life. Is that what you think? You're just kind of along for the ride through this hard time or, or can yeah. you walk away with a message? No, I, well, if there's a message, I guess is we need to, we, we need to be talking about this stuff. Yeah. We can't just assume because you're the father or you're the mother, you know what to do and then you can handle this or that mental health crisis is something we know what to do. Why would you automatically know as a parent? Um, the answers are complex. He deliberately doesn't give an answer. He hints that maybe it's the divorce or maybe it's problems with school or who knows, but it could be chemical. We don't, we don't know. And I think there's deliberately in many ways no answer. And what he's trying to do is put you inside the head and heart of the people around the person suffering to make you feel what is the, to put you in the situation of what the hell would I do? and the confusion and the stress and the pain of it. And that's, yeah, that's, I think, I think that's his goal. He wants us to message. What was your first question, Scott? You said something, I'm, sk I'm skipping around it, sorry. No, it, it was it was basically, <laughs> probably because it was long-winded, but basically just um, because it's so intimate, you know, given the theater aspect, for me, I just felt like I was watching. I, I I didn't feel. I'm not thinking like, oh, what can I learn? Even obviously, it's about mental health. But is there a message, or, or are you just witnessing the struggle? No, you're witnessing the struggle. Yeah. You're trying to. He just wants you to feel what it is like to be in a situation that is so desperate where you have no idea what to do, and the water around you is rising and rising and rising, and the hopelessness of it, and the fear of it, and the fight of it. And he wants you to viscerally feel it. In The Father, he wanted you to viscerally feel what it's like to be inside Anthony Hopkins' head going through dementia. What is that really like? So that we can empathise and we can discuss. So, you know, you watch The Father and then you see someone with Alzheimer's, you go, you have a different feeling of what it must be like for them to be going through it. And I think he's doing the same here with The, with the Son. Shifting gears a little bit before I covered entertainment, I was a hockey reporter. So I have to ask you how much truth there was to the fact that you wanted to play the big enforcer, John Scott, and, and how far did that get if that's true? You got pretty close. I love the script. It's a great story. I think it's an amazing story. Um, just didn't quite get there in the end, but I think it's a extraordinary story. I kind of love it. Was it kind of, you know, the juxtaposition of he's an underdog, but also like a huge tough guy? Is that what drew you in maybe? I'm not so much the tough guy. I liked who he was as a person. I liked his commitment to his family and the underdog. And also this idea that he'd been cast in a role and made a living in this role, but there was a dream underneath. Yeah. Underneath that, there was a dream of being a great hockey player not just an influencer, you know, and all of a sudden he got that moment and then it's that age-old question, can I actually, am I good enough to fulfil my dream? That was a that was a crazy moment at that All-Star game because that shot he hit, like you got to be a good player to hit that. It was, I know him, so I had to ask you. He'll, uh, he'll love hearing that. I, I have to ask you, when in the first X-Men movie, when you're getting ready to film the cage fight scene, uh, the first the first look we have at Wolverine. Do you think about how much that's going to mean to so many people, that first glimpse of a real-life Wolverine? Or do you do you not think about it? Or do you think about it and try to use that with your performance? I think about it. We shot it at the end because I wasn't physically in shape yet when I got the part. So the director said, I'm going to move this. We were going to shoot the beginning years. I'm going to move it to the end. Um. I didn't know anything really about X-Men or the comics. So I didn't know anything. And this is 2000. Comic-Con is still a relatively small thing, better what it is now. Um, the internet is just sort of catching on. So even when the movie came out, I think everyone was surprised at the amount of support there was and, and the, how big the following was. 
that I knew. There was enough people involved in that movie telling me this moment is going to blow people's minds. So I knew the pressure on it, and I'm really glad we waited to the end. Because by the end, I really felt I had the character and I knew what it was. I interviewed Cal Dodd last year, you know, the, the legendary voice actor who did Wolverine for the animated series. And he, he had said that you told him that you listened to a lot of his tapes. And, and I'm just curious how and, and if at all you incorporated that into Wolverine's voice or or growl or, or yell. I tried. Certainly the, the depth and it. I, th- I thought his voice was great. It's one of those really frustrating things when, you, when you're going around the world and you see yourself in the movie with someone else's voice. <laughs> I'm always like, oh, that guy's voice is awesome. I wish my voice was more like that. I was really, you know. <laughs> um, I actually did some damage to my voice playing Wolverine with the yelling, um, which took me a little while to get over. But, yeah. My last Wolverine question for you. You know, I, I know Ryan had asked you for three years to reprise the role. In a, in five a, years. Five years. Wow. <laughs> wow. So for five years, he asked you. And, you know, obviously you you made the decision and gave him the call in August. I'm just curious if, if it was Sean's attachment or, or something else that, that clicked for you in all, this past August. I love, I love Sean. We've done a movie together. and It's great. It was here. I, I can't tell you exactly why, Scott, but I can tell you the date. It was always 14th. I was driving with my family and both my kids. They both had their earphones in. And uh, I was just on my own driving. They were listening to music or something. And I was, it just came to me like a flash, so clear. The thought, the question came into my head, what do I really want to do? And boom, there it came. And I knew. And I, by the time I got there, I rang Ryan, literally got out of the car, rang him. And he said, this timing is crazy because we've got a meeting with Kevin Feige at about five o'clock this afternoon. So, uh, yeah, so it all just came for the right reason, but it was really like a flash. And I was genuinely out, Scott. Like, I was like, I'm, I'm cool, I'm done. Anyone who asked me on the street, that asked me every single day, come back, I said, no, no, I'm good, I'm done. I wasn't pretending I really was. And then all of a sudden, one day, I, I really wasn't. <laughs> I was just just for me personally, I was so glad when I saw the, uh, you know, the social media video because th- so many things get spoiled now. I just happened to open my computer and saw Ryan's tweet. Like it was at the top of my, so I clicked it and it was uh, just an awesome way you guys revealed that. It was fantastic. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, last thing I have for you, and thanks so much. This has been great. The way your career is now, you know, I don't ever think you were hurting for work or accolades, but I mean, given given the music man and the recognition yesterday and, you know, the bold project the sun is and then ramping up for Wolverine. Like how does this compare to other parts of your career? I feel different at this point in my career. It's been, I guess, 25 years I've been doing it. I'm super excited about everything. I have a confidence. I feel um, I do everything. I'm lucky enough not to have to worry about paying the bills. I do everything because I really, really want to do it and I'm passionate about it. And if it doesn't make sense here, here and in my gut, I don't do it. And that's a really, really fortunate, blessed place to be as an actor. And that's where I feel I'm at. 